Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Ride 4. We're going to be using the Kawasaki Ninja GPZ 900R Ninja from 1989, well before I was born, but this bike is part of the Retro Bikes collection. This is the 80s and 90s pack that came out just a couple of days ago, or last week, I believe. And i got to say, I really like this bike. I think it's very, very nifty. It, there's quite a few decent little bikes in this game. I'm much more of a modern bike kind of guy, but I do like jumping on some old retro sort of machines, the two-strokes, even some of the older four-strokes as well, just some of the old classic bikes. And this one is certainly added to that rule. I'm very much enjoying this bike so far. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks very retro, of course, to match the theme of the bike and of the game, of course, for this particular DLC. But I'm quite impressed so far, and I don't even mention yet. Too busy uh, talking, going on about this wonderful Kawasaki. But we are here in the Road America doing this target time trial. And it's pretty simple, it's a 2 minute 23 second. I can't imagine it's having too much difficulty. I have upgraded the bike. I don't remember if I upgraded it fully. Or if I just chucked on a couple of upgrades. I, I think, perhaps, I upgraded it to its full potential. If I do recall, I do understand that I've definitely changed the tyres. Of course, this being a wet race, you wouldn't even know. But I do recall changing the tyres and removing the lights and indicators and, of course, the mirrors. But I'm really impressed with this one so far. It's a nice little DLC pack, cost me around four quid. Not too bad, of course, uh, you still get the extra achievements and a few extra events. This event is actually called the Maverick Group. So, nice, simple Maverick, one word, of course such as Maverick Vinales, a shout out to him for winning the Grand Prix last weekend. Now if you're watching this video now, it's probably Grand Prix time very, very soon in Qatar, and that is referring to MotoGP. So of course, you might be watching this between or after Moto3, or even the Moto2 Grand Prix, so shout out to you if you're doing that. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're doing that right now. That would be pretty cool. But of course, we have only got the final sort of lap to do, and this is the final section. And of course, I think we're going to smash the time. Yes, we certainly are, by about six seconds. So we now move across on this magnificent Kawasaki, the GPZ900R, and we're all going to be on the same motorcycle right here in Laguna Seca. So we're going to pull over to one side and let everyone get through. The classic style, of course, in uh, my Ride 4 playthroughs. And we have a couple of Brazilians ahead of us, Kirsten Malwitz, straight up into the lead there. And let's see how we get on. Of course, Laguna Seca being one of my most favourites and beloved tracks of all time. I think Laguna Seca holds a very special place in my heart because when I very much first started playing MotoGP games, this was the track I would ultimately choose to play like 100% races on. I think MotoGP 06 might have been one of my first ones. I don't really recall, it's hard to say, but I do recall that one as a vivid memory of just going for the 100% races right here. And I do remember the lap times on that game being completely off, like you could do the whole lap in about a minute if I remember correctly, as we do go up in the inside of two Brazilians. We now have Sabina Ferry to our right, Frank Jordan just a little bit further ahead, as Sabina Ferry fights back there. Shout out to the lady in ninth place. Not to be in ninth place much longer, as she is demoted to tenth. And then, of course, we try and get ahead of Frank Jordan. As, oh, Frank Jordan a little bit out of shape there, getting too close, but good recovery from Frank Jordan. Excellent stuff from him as he tries to dive up on the inside or to go around the outside of Jade Wright, but that didn't happen as we... Oh! We lift the American up into the corner and we'll now attack another American in a moment's time for turn 10. Not close enough, but we will have this speed on the straight to outbreak not one, but two other riders. Brilliant stuff in just one lap. We're up to sixth place. So 50% of the field has been beaten already as Erica Verne's... Kristen, uh, Kirsten Malwitz and Eddie McDowell are up there. Danny Boer, Marilyn Gordon as well, just to mention. But, of course, two Germans ahead of us. We'll be sure to get them sooner rather than later. Of course, it'll be pretty much an easy job. Of course, the AI never really opposes too much of a threat. Every now and again, we do get some terrific battles, like the French Riviera battle just a couple of days ago. If you haven't watched that video, I would implore you to watch it. There's a little bit of contacts made there with myself and Kirsten Malwitz. It was a brilliant, thrilling battle that went all the way down to the wire. So I would highly, highly recommend that one. Of course, now going into the left-hander of Turn 5, Marilyn Gordon, Danny Boer and Eddie McDowell are in your top three positions. Of course, we will be joining them in a moment's time. I wouldn't mind betting that Marilyn Gordon will be overtaken upon the corkscrew. Of course, one of my favourite parts in MotoGP, or it used to be MotoGP, Superbike. 
and even ride for every other game you could possibly think of, even in the championship itself. As we could do go ahead of Marilyn Gordon, a little bit too close to Danny Boer there, but Danny Boer fights back once more. Good stuff from the South African, giving everything he's got. But I do feel the South African is delaying the inevitable. As Albert Wesker would say in Resident Evil, you are delaying the inevitable. So Danny Boer, consider that as a warning, because we're going to go up on the inside here on the left-hander of turn 11. But we didn't. Danny Boer is still actually providing a good battle here. It's good stuff from uh, the South African man, giving everything he's got. He's swer swerving a little bit there. We, like, just oddly moving to the left and right there. I don't know why. Losing a lot of time by doing so as we break into the Andretti hairpin for turn two. A little bit wide. Thank goodness we didn't touch the gravel on the outside of the track there because right here in California we would have been going into the gravel and probably straight back to the main menus with a disconsolate look. Crestfallen, if you will. Underneath the Michelin sign, turn it right for turn four. Right here at half past three. 27 degrees here in Laguna Seca. Underneath the mother's sign in a moment's time. Of course, closing in on Eddie McDowell. Every single sector, every single lap, every single moment. Getting closer and closer to taking the victory. Of course, you can sort of predict where I'm going to make my overtake. It's probably my favourite overtaking position. It's, I love it. I love overtaking the coach. It's just extremely satisfying. Especially when you know there's a bit of risk to it and it's a little bit of a challenge. So here we go, up on the inside of Eddie McDowell. That is Dr. Ace into the lead. A little bit wide there, or on the, too tight on the inside. Looking like Valentino Rossi versus Casey Stoner in 2008. Truly phenomenal battle. Hopefully we can recreate some of that magic here today. But not quite because Eddie McDowell is already falling behind. And we didn't even make it to the penultimate lap. Now holding it left for turn 11 once more. Careful of going on the rumble strip there if you can avoid it. I've done that a couple of times. Where you just sort of bounce on top of it and sort of just slow down ever so slightly. Or you can even lose a bit of grip and then end up dropping the front. So just bear that in mind guys. So we're now going to turn two, the Andretti hairpin. Braking, using a little bit of rear brake there just to slow us down, but wasn't really truly necessary. I do like to chuck it in every now and again in that particular corner, just to help slide the rear into the corners. As the marshal is waving the yellow flag there, not sure who's gone down. I didn't see anything on the graphic on the left-hand side. But someone has met the demise in this uh, American Grand Prix, so sad to see that for them, or sad to hear about it at least. As we are 1.5 seconds ahead of Eddie McDowell leading this Grand Prix with relative ease now, let's say. Not really pushing 100%. It's not necessary for me to do so, but I might push it a little bit more to see if we can improve our lap time and get an even better lap time, but we'll see. But for the time being, smooth sailing on this penultimate lap as we're going to break into the corkscrew any moment now. Beautifully done. Just got to get the change of direction correct. Nicely done. Flick it right again for the corkscrew. Beautiful. Underneath the WeatherTech sign for the uh, sponsored track. Hold it left. Do struggle to get the optimal line there for that left-hander for uh, for turn 9. But it's, uh, it's one of those ones that you don't really need to get fully accurate because you can still save it on the brakes for turn 10. With it being a very long and wide track, there are probably a few lines you can take depending on your own riding style. So, of course, I would always recommend that if you do want to get better at the game, try and stick to your own ride lines and try and then try others and then see if you can make a difference that way. But of course there are many ways to improve in this game. Let's go a little bit wide there into the Andretti hairpin. We're onto the gravel. Not ideal there. We did lose a whopping ton of time to Eddie McDowell. Got a little bit too cocky. I think I've mentioned this many times before but cocky does not beget confidence. we got to uh, be careful about this. I know we're uh, a pretty good player on this game but still AI does hold a little bit of a threat every now and again as we have a, another one second lead so I don't think it's too, well, I don't think there's any panic stations to be honest with you but one more mistake and of course Eddie McDowell will be right there McDowelling his way into the top position Shout out to dowels, aren't there those things that you stick in the wall to then make, um, <laughs> make a hole it, or you hold it into the screw, is that right? Is that a dowel? <laughs> I have no idea. As we go a little bit wide for the corkscrew, doing the Rossi once more, but and, and beyond. No ideal, getting a big wheelie outside the corner as well. Eddie McDowell's going to be there in a moment. Oh, Eddie McDowell's in the lead on the final lap of this Grand Prix. I've not been paying attention. I've not. I should have been paying more attention to this one. Should be giving it a little bit more seriousness. But it's quite alright. I'm sure we can get it up on the inside. We are very, very good on the last corner. As, uh, I've almost had a heart attack just now. Don't let it lose it here. That would be absolutely bloody annoying if that happened. But we're alright, thank goodness for that. Oh, 
Panic stations there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.